Good morning. My name is uh, Christoph Bobda, and today I would like to present uh, some of the research that we do in my research group um, here at the University of Florida, the Smart System Research Lab. Um, my work is uh, mostly, so the core of my work is about architecture optimization. The purpose of that is from a given application, like in this case here, structural design of an, of an application mod of, made upon a set of tasks um, interconnected in a certain topology um, that we uh, built the best computer architecture to perform this application. That computer architecture is built uh, by assembling component uh, from various type of processor with various uh, property and then various interconnect network link bus grid putting all that together in order to build a system that will best perform for the application at hand. Um, today, um, systems are more SOC-centric, so system on chip centric. Uh, the purpose, usually in embedded system, which is the core of our research here, is that we want to construct an implementation that works, that an implementation that fulfills the requirement of our application. And we do that by uh, putting together components like microprocessor, memory, um, programmable logic, analog component, hardware accelerator. We put all those together in order to achieve the best uh, computer or the best architecture for the application at hand. The interconnection network can be a sample bus or a set of buses or um, a network on chip that is designed to better handle the communication among the tasks of that application. Um, our goal is to optimize those type of system and optimization is always done in regard to a metric. The various metrics that we consider here, the unit cost, size, power and weight, performance, flexibility, maintainability, time to market. All those metrics cannot be optimized all at once. So usually when you optimize one of the metric, it uh, degrades the other metric and so considering all those metrics at once is a huge challenge in the design of this type of system. Um, but we have been able in the past to come up with um, very efficient implementation and then just provide uh, some compromise to the user where the user will be able to select what is the best fit for him. Today's system are becoming even more complex with the issue of resiliency and security. Resiliency, um, as we miniaturize the system, the system becomes smaller and smaller. Um, then we start experiencing a lot of probabilistic behavior in those systems, which means something we have designed to perform a certain function would perform this function not all of the time as we expect. And also, because most of system today operates in a very open environment where the perimeter is no more clearly defined, we have to see the issue of attacks security that we need to consider while designing those systems. That complicates the optimization process and uh, put more pressure on, on people like us, on designer of those systems. So the way we handle um, uh, uh, security and resiliency today is um, by considering the, hard, the software and hardware implementation. So this is a classic case of a system on chip made upon a software running on on a processor with a set of threads here uh, managed through an operating system and then a set of hardware accelerator, peripheral and memory. Now, one problem that we have today is the fact that several of those threads here, because they have the latitude of accessing the hardware accelerator here at will, um, there is a possibility of using those hardware accelerators as covered in order to launch attack on other threads. Usually in software, the, the threads are well isolated, but in hardware, we don't have that case. So we handle that today by uh, including handler that allows us to capture the behavior or to capture the request that we need to perform uh, from software to the hardware and then um, perform some um, verification, some checking operation at the level of the resource that we intend to preserve. Um, our application is very, uh, our research is very application oriented. So we apply our research in the field of autonomous system, robotic, autonomous car, uh, drones. So this car is available in our lab in a, a different implementation. We have drone in our lab and all those are um, 
uh, using a computer that embedded in them and those computer here gives us the possibility to implement some form of adaptivity so this is the architecture um, on the FPGA that is uh, that is driving those devices here the architecture is made upon a processor and then several um, uh, IPs uh, that could be controllers and that could be uh, other module for instance for the servo and then the communication uh, they're all interconnected through an interconnection network here and um, uh, the controller that we have on the device could be adaptive in, in, in order for us to have the whole system being adaptive but to handle the resiliency we usually spare some part of the hardware such that uh, such that whenever at runtime we have a problem arising from a module that is no more performing at the level that we expect then we could use some laying around hardware here in order to compensate for this for this problem um, another field of application so this is what we seek to build in, in the near term is a, is a robot cell here or it's a factory cell of the future where we have several robots some stationary or a mobile uh, being able to perform a set of tasks and those robots um, are performing those tasks here under the coordination of the human so together they form what we call the core box here and uh, our goal is to be able to enable uh, um, a cell like this um, to operate um, and be pretty safe for the human so we have a set of sensors around in this case camera or lidars and those will capture the whole global environment uh, be able to monitor how the robot process uh, what object a robot uh, seeking to get and so on and then um, knowing the, the what the behavior of the robot should be provide and um, provide instruction to robot controller in order to perform the right thing then we have um, the next application that we consider in our lab which is here the uh, tackling so our goal here is to tackle the big data challenge directly at the edge um, the example here is for image sensor but uh, applies to all type of sensors well so in general when we have sensor we collect data from with those sensor and then we send those data usually in a sequential form um, to a back-end processor that back-end processor could be on the same board or it could be maybe in the cloud um, today with the amount of data that we're collecting from those sensors it becomes almost impossible to use the bandwidth that is available in order to first send those data to the cloud before doing the processing uh, let's take this example of image processing uh, videos today they move from single definition to high high definition 4k 8k and then it's just gonna grow like that if you take the case of an uh, of a 4k video so the amount of um, data that this video process per second is something like seven gigabyte if you like to have a high quality and um, then you cannot you cannot transport those data all the time to the back end without very powerful processor to perform the compressing and the DARPA has predicted that uh, by putting a lot of component together they were able to achieve something like 72 gigabyte 72 gigabyte it's just a matter of time before we get there and uh, the DARPA clearly stipulated that the communication infrastructure that we have today and in the future will not be enough for us to do this operation of transferring the data always from the sensor to the back end server or to the back end uh, processing unit in order to perform the computation there so what we need to do is to push the computation as much as possible directly within the sensor so instead of sending all the data out we could do the processing at least all the most relevant data and then just send a minimal amount of data um, related to maybe the knowledge that we're gaining in those data out and then do the processing there for the case of the image sensor our approach here consists of leveraging the way the brain process image so it, in usually an image goes from the retina uh, uh, through several uh, stages here into the high level of the brain where the inference will be done but along the way processing is being done very fast uh, stream of processing here until the inference is done in the high highest level of the brain but on on the on the downs, uh, downstream here we also have feedback that tells those units on the downstream here how they should be processing depending on what the brain is seeing at a much more higher level so we leverage this here in order to build 
um, various stage of processing. So those are the different stage of processing in the brain. And then we also use the same approach here in order to design a unit that will be processing at that at those level. So our unit um, takes an image and then segment this image in pixel. And then in several stages here, those pixels are being processed. In the first stage, we do the processing of the pixel of the, at the pixel level. Then um, in order for us to gain some early vision visual features, and then as we move into the next layer here, we start doing the processing in a much more uh, coarse region, so much more broader region here until we get to the high level and then we have the inference on the whole image. In our case here, we have only three levels of processing uh, and this is enough in order for us to perform uh, the computation directly within the sensor to push at, as much as possible directly within the image sensor. Um, other, other application that we consider in our lab, uh, deep learning, AI, uh, like in the case of fall prevention. So the goal here is in general to figure out when somebody lying on the bed or somebody sitting on the chair is perform an, performing an action like trying to stand up um, that will lead to a fall. Uh, we use three different types of sensor, thermal, infrared, structural light in order to uh, capture various type of data here and then perform the fusion in order to figure out what the person is currently doing. Um, so here are some images of our early test. So we did like a couple of years back and then we built these devices here. This device is being currently operated by a startup that is doing some uh, test in hospital and then they expanded that today in uh, I believe five nursing homes where the, de the device is currently being tested and improved. Another application um, that we consider in our group is, uh, or that we have considered in the past, uh, sudden unexpected infant death prevention. So um, usually, when we lie, when we when when we um, lay kids on the bed, on a on a bad position, a uh, bad thing can happen. Like the kid can suffocate. Um, those two examples here shows the position we should not be laying the kid on, and those here a good position how the kid should be laying on the bed. But a lot of young parents, for instance, don't know that, and this could usually lead to um, sudden unexpected infant death. Uh, what we did here was to, um, to um, uh, with a specialist in the field, to uh, train um, a, a neural network uh, using um, videos that we've segmented before. So we segmented those, before, those video and then passed that into um, a, a, a neural network for training, and then we devised a model for that that was able to tell us whenever we get um, a kid in a certain position, if that kid was in a danger of suffocating or not. So we have that implemented on, we have an app for that, but we also have the implementation on a Google Tensor uh, flow processing unit or an, an, an FPGA uh, camera that we have in the lab. And the case that we see here, for instance, the kid is laying on the bed here, but having a lot of stuffing animal around, which is uh, not a desirable condition. And the application is telling us that this is not a, um, a good position. While in this case here, where the kid is just laying on the bed and nothing around, laying in a good position here, we have the green light that the kid is sleeping in. So even if the kid now start rotating and uh, find itself in a, in a bad condition here, the camera will be able to react in real time and then notify us about that. Um, we also uh, consider here traffic light optimization and the traffic light being able to detect all cars um, in which direction they go in the type of the car that will give us also some indication on the fuel and so on. And then performing statistic here that can help us coordinate the operation of those traffic lights across several traffic light or uh, several intersections in the city. For all those applications, what we do here is that um, model of convolutional neural network or deep learning are usually prone in order to figure out what are the pattern. So the most common recurrent pattern that we need that we have in those applications. And finding those patterns allows us to pre-build components that are optimized in order to perform the operation in order to best perform those uh, operation on those patterns. Now, having a given application with a given uh, model or a given structure for the model in those applications, we now do some form of component extraction 
Then we do the matching, so selecting from our database here the best component that would match that, or we could even augment or maybe um, have other representation of the pattern that we've detected here in the application at hand. And then we'll build the whole architecture for this particular application using the component that we've pre-built and pre-optimized before, and then do the whole optimization at this point here in order to generate the final architecture. So those, some, those are some of the things that we do in my lab, but in general, it's always starting from a given application, finding out what are the challenges for those applications, and then try to design the best computer or the best architecture that would perform that application. Thank you very much.